Today, I'm gonna to be breaking down my exact web design process by taking you step-by-step step to one of our recent client projects. From strategizing with the client to developing a visual style, and then finally developing and launching the website on Webflow. I'll show you the entire ins and outs of how this project works and how you can kind of take some of those learnings into your own projects. My name is Ayush. I'm the creator director and founder of Hex, a brand and web studio based in Canada, working with VCs, startups, and enterprises alike. Before I get into the video, I wanna kind of talk about why I'm here. When I started my career early on, I was just learning web design and seeing like how to re redo websites on WordPress. I was still using Elementor at the time. And the first introduction to Webflow for me was actually a video from Ron, and which was kind of going over some of the basics of Webflow and how you can kind of build sites without using code at all. And it was the easiest way to kind of jump from Figma to Webflow. So that kind of kickstarted my career in web development as a whole. And then from there, I kind of learned about freelance and how to kind of tackle that world through his videos. So it's just kind of like a full cycle thing, full circle thing that I'm even here talking about a client project. But yeah, I kind of wanted to give a little preface before getting into the video. So now let's get into the project. Replo is the single most robust conversion focused platform for Shopify teams to kind of set up, measure and test winning campaigns and landing pages. It's used by thousands of agencies and brands every day that are rapidly scaling and want the most powerful landing page product to kind of support their growth. The team was rapidly scaling as well. They were launching new features and reaching new heights and their older website was just not serving their, their growing needs. So they kind of came to us with this kind of almost vague ask to redo their website, redo their content, trim down their bloat and kind of come up with a completely new website design and development. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with the sitemap and strategy. And then from there, we're going to talk about the low fidelity design, get into some stylistic explorations and see how we kind of did a mini rebrand for them and then go into how we use product illustrations and UI to kind of put together those web pieces and those product pieces together. And then finally, how we kind of brought it all to life with Webflow. So first up, since a big ask on this project was to cut down on as much as possible on the website while still maintaining the cohesiveness, the big, big task here was to work with the team and understand Repl's core priorities and see how they're structuring content. We had to trim down a lot of legacy pages and we had to point out a lot of high traffic website pages and landing pages into new pages since a lot of their older work was outdated, but it still had a lot of traffic coming in. So it was kind of a difficult task to make sure we we're maintaining and making sure they're moving forward while not getting rid of all the SEO and the past efforts that were put into the other website. Since this isn't a website that was coming from scratch, this was an already well-established website with a lot of traffic, a lot of good conversions, and a lot of SEO that was already done. A big task was to kind of restructure that strategically without losing any of the core essence of the, of the website. And also making sure that we were getting rid of bloat because there was a lot of bloat over the years. We laid down all of their web pages and their content, and then we prioritized the sections that were actually driving conversions. And then we repackaged that website with focus on those we kind of double down on what was working and what wasn't working. We kind of just got rid of it or we pointed it to a page that might do better. We also laid down a general page content structure for each of these pages. We kind of like broke it down on what the flow of the website should look like. So kind of like a basic sitemap, but also like kind of making sure we know what are CMS items, what are static items and what are template items. So we kind of categorize it that way. Once all of the content structure and the sitemap was done, which was honestly probably the biggest task here since we had to cut on a lot of bloat. The next task was to kind of bring it all to life on a low to mid fidelity design. So once we decided the final sitemap, we started laying down the content of the website visually. This stage is also extremely important as it kind of allows us to see how the, the visuals really flow and how the information flows across the pages. And this allows us to kind of make tweaks to the hierarchy of contents at a very early stage. We can kind of prioritize what, what should go first and what should go second by seeing how it's kind of visually laying out. And then we can also see how we can add in call to actions and uh, little pieces of content resources so we can kind of send traffic to different pages that we want to strategically do. I often hear about like our low fidelity designs that they're not exactly low fidelity. And that's kind of true. We don't really start with pen and paper sketches or completely like dull sketches. We kind of start with the mid fidelity 
sketch just because it's easier to kind of visualize the website even if it's not the branding and it's not the identity that we end up using at the end it makes a lot of sense for the layouts to actually be representative of what the website will kind of look like and that allows us to kind of prioritize content as well and restructure content and know how much content is going to go in each of these paragraphs or each of these headings a lot of times these kind of pen and paper sketches don't really do anything it's almost like a legacy deliverable that people do to kind of show the progress that's being made and kind of stretch out the project. With our engagement, the goal is to kind of get this done really fast. So we kind of just jump the gun. We kind of just go from sitemap to mid fidelity. And then after that, we've worked on style explorations, which I'm gonna get into now. But before that, actually, our low fidelity structure included the layout of the key website pieces. So things like case studies, the blogs, product pages, template marketplace, their solution pages, their academy, they had a lot of pieces. So we had to kind of lay down all the core pieces so we know how things look like um, kind of visually and how things are like kind of divided. And from there, we kind of iterated on these layouts and we optimized it so we can kind of make sure it feels all cohesive and we kind of optimize it also so we can drive traffic to different pages that made sense and that were converting high. Once all of that groundwork was laid, now the time was to kind of have some fun. We talked to their team and they kind of allowed us and gave us a green light to do a mini brand uplift. I wouldn't call this a full rebrand because this isn't really a brand project. We weren't really redoing their logo or the typography or the color system as per, like we were just really doing a subtle iteration of the brand because their existing brand identity, while it was, it was cool and vibrant, it wasn't really being used the way it should have been used. And that was because again, the colors were too bright. There were two out there and it wasn't reflecting Replo's current vision where they wanted to be seen as the serious, um, the, the platform where serious Shopify teams come. We had to kind of take that in and we kind of developed a few mood boards and a few ideas for the styles for the website. And then we ended up choosing kind of a more iterated version of the brand. We toned down some of the colors while still having some of that playful energy. One concept that I wanted to share was this kind of tone deaf concept where we had like almost like two monotone colors and we made like a whole website around that. It was an interesting exploration, but honestly a little bit too experimental for Replo. Once we had all the groundwork laid down with the colors and the typography, and we knew what the visuals of the website's gonna look like, at least at the base core atomic level, the goal was to kind of bring that style sheet to life using the low fidelity sketch that we had earlier. We kind of de designed this new and improved website for, for Replo. And as a part of this, we kind of rethought each of the section of the low fidelity stage or the mid fidelity stage to kind of make this the final ready for production design. And this included obviously mobile design. This included design for the Reploversity, which was kind of like almost like a sub brand where we had dark mode and then neon and that blue pairing, which is almost like a little bit of a more experimental sub brand while it still feels like it's a part of the larger brand system and then um, also we developed the product and the solution pages and made sure we were consistently doing it all the margins and spacings were aligned and that the website layouts could be applied at scale in a large website like this there are hundreds of things that can go sideways styles can get lost new spaces can get embedded and layout rules can get broken people can keep changing line heights and you know there's so many there are hundreds of pages. There are hundreds of pages and there's multiple people working on it. So it's very, very easy to for these things to kind of get lost and the identity to kind of get broken. The goal here was again, to make sure each of these layouts could be broken down and replicated very easily while still not feeling like it was just like a cookie cutter, uh, cut and paste and copy and paste everywhere. So again, kind of a balancing act, kind of developing a component system and an ability for them to kind of bring the brand pieces to scale and turn on new pages without having to reinvent the wheel every single time. So once we had the final website designed on and kind of done on uh, mobile and web, we worked on product illustration, which was a very, very important part of this website since Replo's core offering is in their landing pages and in their offerings to their clients. So we wanted to kind of show that we kind of wanted to show the brands that they work with. They've worked with some really strong consumer and enterprise brands. There's some really strong agencies, some really strong brands that we really wanted to highlight those landing pages while still showing the power of Webflow's product. So that was kind of the goal here. And one challenge here was when we were doing these product illustrations, we don't want it to feel like each illustration is its own brand, which it kind of is because each of these 
illustrations is a representative of a different brand using the platform, we still wanted to make it feel like part of the same universe and not like all over the place. So again, another balancing act where we kind of tone down the color sometimes for the backgrounds and made sure it aligned so it looked similar to the to Revflow's color palette that we defined earlier. Again, we had to customize some layouts, change a few landing pages and change a few colors to make this work. But again, at the end of this, we had the full website design done, mobile and web. We had all the product UI and animations and illustrations done. And we were kind of ready to move this to Webflow, which is what we did next. And this included a site-wide migration of Repflow's dynamic content from their existing CMS platform, which had hundreds of blogs, tens of integrations and experts and marketplace items. So this was a big migration effort and we had to move all of this content to Webflow, make sure it all fit with the new CMS and we had to set the new parameters, make sure all the content was getting imported. Some of the content wasn't. So we had to restructure that and kind of manually do that. So there was some manual labor here, some custom code here, some direct importing through Webflow's powerful CMS platform here. But we ended up kind of making sure all of the collections that we had defined and that Repl Repl had earlier were being easily imported and that we changed it a little bit based on the design as well. Some of the core highlights of the Webflow site, since this is such a big site, I can only go through like maybe six or seven core highlights that we did. The first thing that we did was a CMS power template gallery. Now Repflow has a massive gallery of page and section templates that they kind of offer to their users to duplicate into their projects on Repflow. What this means is they can have a header component on their website and you can kind of copy it and then paste it on your Repflow project. So there was some custom code involved there. We worked with their development team to make this come to life. And we kind of set up this dynamic sidebar with filters to enable the user to navigate this marketplace. And then after this, we worked on the template pages for solutions and products. So Webflow had at this time just newly released template pages, which allows teams to kind of manage um, more complex pages without having to set up CMS and without having to set them up as regular static pages. So this is kind of almost a middle ground where you can duplicate these pages without having to um, use the CMS every single time. Because again, the CMS is not going to account for the complex changes each page takes. So we had to set that up for uh, the product and the solution pages. We also did it for some use cases stuff and we kind of enabled them to kind of replicate these pages at scale without having to kind of start from zero to one. After this, I want to go into Repl's dark mode, which was used on the Repl-versity. And this isn't like a simple dark mode where we just kind of change the classes. We kind of use some custom code to make sure all of the elements on the page were automatically going to dark mode and all of the hovers were changing from the regular hover stage to the experimental neon hover state that we had defined in the design stage without having to really change any of the classes. So that was very important. And this is important because the nav bar is something that's a global element. The footer is a global element. That means it's gonna be the same on light pages and dark pages. And we don't wanna have two duplicate items that you have to update every single time. So we kind of just made it so you put the regular nav bar and the regular footer and all the items and all the components that you have across the website and you just put it here and magically through custom code changes it and makes it dark mode and changes it to the appropriate hovers and all uh, the line spacings and the dark paragraph spacings, all, all of that stuff is all automatically done even the opacities, every little detail is automatically transferred. So this was very important. It's a very small detail. You don't think about it much, but it does add up when you have to kind of manage two duplicate versions of every single section. Next up, I want to talk about the blog which was, as I said, a massive piece since there were hundreds of pages. We had to set them up. We had to make sure none of the slugs were getting lost. So we had to set up some manual redirects in some places, but most of it was fine. It was a smooth transition and we set up some filters. We set up some ways we can kind of scroll through content on, on the pages and um, yeah, made sure everything was kind of SEO optimized and uh, search engine optimized and all the headings and the titles and the meta tags, everything was set up there. Now I want to go into CMS power FAQs. And usually FAQs are static elements. For Replo, we needed it to be dynamic just because every page has its own unique set of frequently asked questions. And we wanted to set up some filtering and tags so the Replo team can kind of easily pick and choose which item to show on which page and what makes sense the most because we don't want to have the same what is Replo, how, how much is it priced on every single page, especially some use cases and some industry specific pages where you have those kind of industry specific content. After this, I want to now get into landing pages, which was 
a thing that Replo was doing before as well. They were A-B testing a lot of landing pages. They were having a lot of resources and one-off kind of paid ad pages. So we wanted to kind of just enable them to do this on Webflow. So we set up again, a CMS, CMS power template page where they, they kind of were able to add some basic content and reuse some sections while changing it and making it dynamic and adding like custom forms and custom PDF links to download for resource sections and stuff like that. Next, I want to go into symbol led CTAs and symbol led CTAs were needed because again, as I mentioned, each page, since there was so much content needed its own custom call to action, where it made sense with the rest of the content of the page. We don't want it to be a simple, Hey, just join Replo. We want it to be related to, for example, if it's an eyewear page brand, we want it to be related to that. We want the image to be related to that. We want to show some brands in the eyewear space and we want the content to be related to that. We want a case study next to it that's related to that or for another eyewear brand. So that was kind of the whole purpose here. We wanted to set up the symbols, which allowed the team to easily cater the copy messaging and links for each call to action based on the content section of the rest of the page. So we hooked them up to the use cases CMS so they can quickly set up customer story call to actions. And then we integrated the CTA blocks into rich text so they can implement them on content pages and blogs as well. So they can have the CTA component on blogs on uh, rich tech pieces. So this is again, something that's really helpful for these teams because on blogs, usually people just have links off their website or the next step, but having like a standout section really helps. Finally, I want to talk about the experts directory, which was a custom CMS powered experts directory for leading agencies and freelancers that were working on Replo that were offering their services um, for Replo. And we wanted to kind of build a home for them where they can kind of show their portfolio. They can show uh, their pricing, their description, their company links. So just a very standard relatively to the rest of the website, a standard section. And we also set up some profiles for them individual profile that the team can again have, but yeah, that's most of the website in terms of the functionality and based on the kind of scope that we had defined for them. There were some additional pieces that are not live right now, but we set them up just so they can use later. And overall, this was a big, big migration. This was not just a design project, not just a development project, but a full restructuring of the content removing bloat from the existing website and then moving it into a kind of a new visual identity that served the new messaging. And then again, bringing it to life on Webflow end to end, a lot of functionality, a lot of features, a lot of custom code, and it couldn't be possible without like good collaboration from their team. And honestly, that was a big unlock for us. Their team was super collaborative. They were really smart. They were really sharp. They knew all the ins and outs for custom code. So we were, we didn't have to kind of teach them everything from scratch. They can kind of come in and work with us, especially on the templates marketplace where we had to use Replo's actual product to copy the sections onto their product. Again, that's something that they would know much better than us because they use Replo on a daily basis. So again, it's, it's a lot of collaboration there. We had a team for everything. Um, on their side and we had our team kind of collaborating with them. So that's kind of everything. Those are my final thoughts. The deliverables were again, the website, the Webflow project. We did a component library for them. We did a CMS system for them. We did product design for them, some custom illustration and iconography for them. We trained them on Webflow. We did the sitemap for them at the beginning. We did that SEO cleanup. We did some bloat removal. We did uh, Webflow handoff. We did a migration from their existing CMS. We did some no code stuff. Um, we did some performance edits and a lot, a lot of custom code. That's everything from my side. I hope this helped kind of see what a big migration looks like. And again, this isn't the biggest migration in the world. There's so many bigger projects, but again, for our team, this was a pretty major, major website. Um, we usually only take a couple of these a year. So it's always interesting to see, um, kind of how the process is, especially when I was starting out these videos on flux where Ron was actually breaking down his website breakdowns for like VCs and stuff was super helpful for me because back then I didn't even know what any of this was. And it, just to see his process and see his thought taught and how he comes up with things like logo marks and visual identities was a big kind of helping factor for me. So I, I just hope that some, some of that can be kind of, uh, you can kind of get some of that from this video. Um, but yeah, that's everything.
And yeah, subscri subscribe to Flux. These guys are, this is a great channel.